Hey friends. Tyler. Tyler and I are really excited to cook with you today. This is our last official kids cooking lesson, um, which is bittersweet, but the fun is not over because we have a kids prep dinner challenge happening on Saturday, May 2nd. Type the word prep, all caps, all lowercase, it doesn't really matter into the comments and I'll message you the details on how you can RSV for that so that you have, you have plenty of time. It's a whole other week away. Next Saturday, a week from today, a week from tomorrow, my goodness. And I want you to have time to get the groceries that you need. The recipes that we're working with are super kid friendly, budget friendly, pantry friendly, um, pantry staple. And we're gonna work together to get some meals prepped and into the freezer. I hope that you will join us. Prep in the comments and you can learn where and how to RSVP and get access to all that we will be working with. And then I will also email you reminders about when we're going live and when, how you can watch the replay. If you can't join us at noon central time on May 2nd to do this together, then you can always watch the video later, just like you can watch these lesson videos later. So Tyler, tell everyone what we're making today. Slider, a barbecue slider meatballs. That's right. We're going to make some meatballs. We're gonna put some barbecue sauce on top, bake them so that the barbecue gets nice and kind of glazed onto each meatball. And then once they're done cooking, we are going to turn them into um, sliders. It's just a really fun, it's kind of like an alternative little burger, a good summer meal. It's how, Do you remember what the temperature is gonna to be today here? 100. Almost 100 degrees here. So I'm like in summer food uh, mode. Um, you could do uh, meatballs on the grill, but I'm gonna show you here how to bake them. So that's what we're going to learn today, how to make the meatballs, how to bake the meatballs, and how to assemble our sliders is what we are learning here today. And why are you making this meal with us today? Because I like sliders and barbecue. Because barbecue is your favorite, right? Hit me up with some hearts and some likes if barbecue is your favorite. Yay. All right. Disclaimers. Today we are working with a hot oven and raw meat. We are making meatballs. Um, there are options to not get your hands dirty but a lot of times um, meatballs require getting your hands dirty. So parents, you need to be supervising your kiddos, making sure that they're cleaning up properly uh, food safety um, with this meal that we're making today uh, is most important, but let them do the work. This is their time to learn these important valuable life skills. This is why we're taking advantage of all this extra time that we have at home to work on um, these this cooking. And I will tell you that my boys totally fight over who's cooking and I don't remember the last time we made lunch. So. This whole kids learning how to cook thing is working at my house and I hope it's going to be working at your house too. Kiddos, if if I get in the way, Tyler, what do you do? Say, leave time to me. Say, mom, I got this, let me figure it out. Um, you don't need to, um, you can politely and respectfully tell whoever's with you in the kitchen that you're trying to learn and to step away, please. All right, with my disclaimers, I've said that on every video. With my disclaimers, that means it's time to get started cooking. Are you ready? Yes. Alexis, hello, my friend from Minnesota. Minnesota. All right, let's go. The first thing we need to do is preheat the oven. Tyler, can you please preheat the oven? So bake 350, start. Okay, that one's running. All right, type prep into the comments if you want information on our kids prep dinner challenge that's happening Saturday, May 2nd. I want you to uh, RSVP now so you have plenty of time between now and then to get ready. I'll email you everything you need to know. Don't worry, it's very simple, but this is going to be well worth your time. This is almost an extension of these kids cooking lessons. Instead of making one meal, we're gonna prep several meals together at the same time. So check that out, prep into the comments, P-R-E-P, -E and I'll email you or message you all of that information there, okay, we have our oven preheated. Um, meatballs, when you bake them, I'm gonna share two options with you. Um, uh, ground beef tends to have enough fat in it that you don't need to grease your baking dish, whether you're using a glass dish, a metal dish, or in this case, I have here a disposable dish. You don't typically need to grease them, but if you want to, you can, um, so that they don't stick to the bottom. Um, another idea that I, um, yes, Maria, I absolutely will. Another idea I wanna share with you is this. When you bake meatballs, if you want the meatballs to um, tighten up, if you will, you're going to want to do this. Um, and I would even suggest putting a layer of foil into the bottom of a rimmed or lined baking sheet. 
you can nest a, this is just a cookie, uh, cookie rack, like a cookie cooling rack right into there. And then you put the meatballs on top of here after you've uh, made them. And then the fat will drip through and your meatballs will be, they'll just, they'll just be tightened up. They'll be very nice meatballs. You do not have to do this. Um, I highly recommend including a piece of foil underneath just for the greasy mess that will happen underneath of the cooling rack, but that is an option. But for our video today, I just wanted to share that with you. We're just going to use a regular baking pan. This is a disposable baking pan. You can absolutely freeze these meatballs. If you wanted to freeze them, you could freeze them, I would suggest, in some sort of a tray because we do have the barbecue going on top. All right, the next thing, we need to go over, we have our oven preheating, we talked about our baking dishes and if may, maybe spraying them or not spraying them, that's up to you. The next thing we need to do is mix up our meatballs and that's what we're gonna do in this big mixing bowl. So grab a big mixing bowl and then mom's dad's, this is where you might need to help out with the raw meat, making sure that everything's clean, um, any um, surfaces get cleaned, hands get washed really well after working with raw meat, okay? So I'm going to transfer our meat into our mixing bowl here, real quick, hang tight. Do you, Bubba, do you wanna get out that chop stir, that white yes. tool that we like to use? Okay, right, let me wash up, okay. So what we're gonna use is the chop stir, which is the same tool that I use for browning ground beef. It's very handy. Tyler's showing it to you there. It is very handy for mixing up meatballs, just like it is for grounding ground beef, okay? So, Tyler, why don't you give this a couple, a little bit of a mash, just to kind of break up the meat a little bit. If you don't have a chopster like what you see here, you could just use a real heavy uh, metal uh, spoon of some kind and just kind of break up the meat, kind of like this, into sections because we're going to now mix into this meat um, one egg and some breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs will help hold the meatballs together and help soak up a little bit of the um, fat and egg that we are going to um, add in here. And then we will start forming our meatballs, okay? So Tyler's going to crack an egg. You can just crack the egg right into the middle. Do you remember how to crack an egg? so that we don't have as much shell potential of dropping in. If you crack your egg on a flat surface, you'll have less chance of the shell dropping into the bowl. Hooray, no shells. What I see happening a lot of times with kiddos is they, especially, um, or, or new chefs, is you crack it on the side of the bowl and that just creates more breakage in the shell and increases the potential of little pieces of shell dropping in. Then you have to fish them out, and that's just messy and um, annoying and wasting time. Okay, so let's now measure one half cup of breadcrumbs. So Tyler's going to measure one half cup of breadcrumbs. That's this one. Oh, wait, that's a whole cup. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got off the go measuring cup. Okay, here's one. This one. One half cup. My bad, dude. If we had added a full cup, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. You might have to pour. I would suggest pouring over the bowl if, you're if your kiddo's tall enough, just in case. If any extra spills over the top, that's okay. If a little tiny bit of extra drops in below. I, I teach my kids to measure over the bowl like this. Um, unless this container is really full or heavy and there's a potential for a lot of ingredients spilling over, um, it just helps to prevent extra messes, but you can measure on the side if you wanted, you know, to pour into the bowl or pour into the measuring cup over here like this, then transferring it, um, you could do that as well. All right, now we need to add a half a teaspoon of salt and pepper each. So I have the prep dishes right here, and you just want to scoop a half and make sure that it's level. Let's use a knife to level that out. Do you remember how to do that? Hold it back over the thing and then slide your knife across the top so that it gets perfectly even and scrape whatever's left back into the prep dish. Very good. Okay, add that in. If you also wanted to add some garlic powder, 
I think that that would be a good addition here as well. Do you want to add garlic powder to this? It's not on the recipe that I shared, but it is, it is a good option. Okay. So and with this one, with this type of a container, what you can do, let me sh I'll demonstrate it and you can, you can see. What you can do is fill up your measuring spoon, and if it's too full, these are made to swipe as you come out, and it evens out to be perfect. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so use the container to, instead of the knife, use the container to level out. It's kind of, you might have to lean it a little bit. It's, that spoon isn't quite long enough. We need to use our utensil spoons. Here, use this one. Will that fit in there? Yeah, please. No, oh, totally. So this is our long handle of measuring spoons from Utensi. U-T-E-N-S-I-E. -E. Find them on Amazon. They also are great um, stirring spoons, if you will, because they're long. All right. So now what we need to do is use our chopster or our metal spoon and mix that together as best as we can. So press down and twist a little bit, Tyler. I'm gonna move these out of the way so you don't have to see this going. All right, we might need to use the spoon to turn over and get the meat on the bottom. We might need to do that. Here, let me try that. It's a pretty good job. So the meat that's on the bottom needs to get mixed in with the, okay. Well, this is raw meat, so keep it over, over your dish. You know where you could put it for a second? Put it into that baking dish real quick. And just set it there. Right, so I'm going to help Tyler here, and I want you to turn the meat over. I'm just showing you now how you do it. I want you to turn the meat over like this. So the meat on the bottom, you kind of mix, you kind of slowly, you don't, don't do it quickly. You kind of slowly turn it and mix it over like that. Can you do that a few times? All right, friends, this is our last official school cancellation kids cooking lesson. Tyler and I are making barbecue meatball sliders, and we're going to bake these guys. And if you want to join us for our kids prep dinner challenge, type the word prep, P-R-E-P, into the comments, and I will message you how to get access to that plan, the recipes, the shopping list, and all of that that we have happening Saturday, May 2nd. We want you to join us live at noon central time. We're going to be prepping meals. I want to show you how that works. I want to show you how to get your kids working with you in the kitchen. I'm going to teach you a lot of really great um, and valuable hacks and skills. So type the word prep, P-R-E-P, because it's the kids' prep dinner challenge. You guys, I'm over here working myself out of the job, and I want you to do the same thing because I want you to not feel like you're cooking 241 dinners every week that your kids are cooking some of them for you. It's the best. It really is. Um, and I love that uh, everybody who's joined us already and taking advantage of this extra, I don't want to say free time because it de definitely doesn't feel like free time, but this extra time that we have at home to cultivate these important life skills. Okay, that looks really good. All right, let's show you a couple of options for making meatballs, okay? Um, we want to make meatballs that are pretty uniform in size. We want them to be all about the same shape, okay? So you can absolutely mix up the meatballs using um, your hands. I know some people will use like kitchen gloves. Um, it's totally up to you. I generally use my hands. I take my rings off and I just use my hands, okay? If you don't wanna do that, there are some other options that I wanna share with you. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is kind of form it into a loaf inside so it's a little bit pressed together. And then we're going to use an ice cream scooper. I have a pretty large ice cream scooper to mix up the, watch this, Tyler. So you can use an ice cream scooper because we pressed it together. We can kind of make a rounded ball. Uh, a melon baller is gonna be too small, okay? This isn't exactly a ball shape. You might need to get a spoon. I'm trying to show you an option where you don't have to come in contact with the raw meat, okay? I'm gonna show you the other way too. You might um, kind of press it with another spoon 
like this. And then watch over here in the pan. You can drop it into the pan in its meatball shape. This is really great for getting them all the same size. And the reason we want them all about the same size is because then they will cook evenly um, in the stovetop. Do you wanna do a couple meatballs like that? And then I'm gonna show people how to do um, with your hand, okay? So we already mashed that together. You might need to push it against the side so you get that nice, there you go. All right, let me take my rings off, hang on. Just kind of press it together in there all together. You can swipe it off if you need to, yeah, perfect. All right, you wanna drop that in now? Okay. If you're going to use your hands, which you can totally do, you could use a spoon and then your hand, or you can just use your hand, but you're going to want to get about the same amount to just so that we're even with what he's doing. And I just uh, put it into my pan, uh, into my hands, give it a little, little squeeze, and then do a little roll. And there's a nice, nice meatball. Okay, so I'll put mine over there. All right, for the sake of time, I'm gonna work with Tyler here and do this side, and he's gonna do that side. And then I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna bake this, and then I'm gonna show you, we have some already that are cooked here, I'm gonna show you how to assemble your sliders so that you can see what it looks like at the time that you are going to eat these after they bake, okay. So we're assembling these meatballs into this baking dish. I am gonna bake this, we've already preheated our oven to 350 degrees. I'm gonna bake these for 35 minutes, okay? If you're making small, these meatballs are about an inch and a quarter. If you're making smaller meatballs, you might only need to bake for 28 to 30 minutes, but you wanna make sure that you bake long enough so that the center part of the meatball is all the way cooked through. Okay, so that is that. Once we get these in here, these are not ready to bake. They still need the barbecue sauce. So once we get all of these meatballs formed into this baking dish, we are going to squeeze barbecue sauce over the tops of each one just to give it a nice little topping. Does that one look good? Mine are a little bit bigger than yours now, all of a sudden. Yes. My this one got big. This one's big. Okay. That's okay. All right, let me do one more and then I'll wash up and show you while Tyler finishes with his ice cream scooper. I'm still gonna have Tyler wash his hands um, just to be extra safe case his hands yeah, um, in came in contact with the raw meat. That's, that's good, we'll wash hands. So let me wash up and then we'll move on to the barbecue sauce part. Very good, my friend, very good. So Tyler's showing how to do the ice cream scoop option, which just is less contact with the meat. And then there's also, you can just roll them into, in your hands, if you wanted to use gloves, you could use gloves. Whichever your preferred method is, we just wanna give you some options. Again, parents, this is raw meat, so make sure you're watching closely and cleaning all the right surfaces and um, whatnot. Keep everything clean and safe in your kitchen. I'm actually gonna clean right here real quick. Should I do another one right here? I'm gonna refill my cleaning. Right. Okay. Yeah, let's do one more row and then we'll do, I'll do one row barbecue and then you can do the rest, okay? This is a good one where I'm doing a lot of demonstrating and then letting Tyler finish. If you need to do the same thing, you could do that too. Okay, so with these meatballs, I have a big, your favorite barbecue sauce, doesn't matter what, um, what brand. Good morning, Melanie in New Zealand. I'm glad that you're joining us. You could, you could make this for dinner this weekend, huh? It's the weekend for Melanie. And we're still hanging out on Friday. Isn't that fun? I love that about being international. Okay. All right. So what I'm just going to do is just do a little dollop onto each meatball. Did you see that, Tyler? 
And then you can give it a little bit of a spread with the back of a spoon. Last one. We'll just fill this one up and then we'll uh, do something else with the rest of that meat. That's fine. The back of the spoon, I'm over here to the right. You just want to kind of spread it on top so that as these bake, this barbecue sauce kind of glazes itself right onto the top of this meatball. And then after it's baked, we're going to add some sliced cheese on top and onto our slider and that cheese will melt onto the barbecue sauce and in, you know, in the slider bun and it's just going to be delicious. Okay, Tyler, your turn. I need you to do a little dollop and then a little bit of <clears throat> spreading of the barbecue sauce. I think Tyler's definition of a dollop is probably more than mine. Huh. Mr. I love barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So we have our oven preheated. We're getting our, bar we're gl basically glazing our meatballs with barbecue sauce. It's going to bake for 30, these are going to bake for 35 minutes. And then when they come out, I'll show you what to do in just here in just a second, because I don't want you to wait 35 minutes while these bake in my oven. I mean, Tyler and I can be pretty entertaining. We could probably do some funny dances. He's like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> All right, spread that around just a little bit. Very good. And then we're going to put that, um, I'm going to leave that in here. We're going to put that spoon into the sink over here, because it'll be, it'll have touched the raw meat. Just be very mindful of anything that touches the raw meat, keeping your, your kitchen safe and healthy. Okay. You want to slide those into the oven and set the timer for 35 minutes? I might make another tray with a small baking dish with what we have left here. I'm going to do this so we can show you what we're going to do next. Okay. Now, I already have some cooking here. And Tyler, you want to open the slider buns and set one out? Oh, after you push third, uh, push start, push the buns. Yeah, very good. Okay. Tyler's got the timer set. So open up those slider buns. This is what you'll do. Now that you have your meatball baking in 35 minutes, we are going to assemble our sliders. So you get your slider buns and uh, let me warm, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you about some options. Okay. So you'll take the top off and you'll put one or two meatballs onto your slider, depending on how big they are. Okay. So take, let's do two of these since these are kind of small. So these are ones that are already cooked and, and I don't think they're warm anymore, but that's okay. He's like, let me glaze this. <laughs> you can put one, these are small ones. So put two together. And then what we want to do is you'll probably need to cut your cheese. You don't have to cut the cheese. You know what cut the cheese means. <laughs> Tyler's looking at me like, guys, this is what it's like living with a house of boy in a house of boys. Okay. If you don't know what cut the cheese is, ask your mom about they'll tell you. Okay. So, this is a really large piece of cheese for this small slider, but so there's a couple, you could, you're like, I'll take all of it. So you could trim it or you could just kind of cut, so there's some options here. So you could just cut it in half like this. You could cut it into quarters. This is a good math lesson. Half, right? Quarters. But I think Tyler wants to do a little bit of art, don't you? Okay, so Tyler's going to do a little bit of art. I would probably take a half a slice like this and then a quarter it and then kind of put them on like this and let it melt, let it melt over, or you could do it the other way, and let it melt over like that. Totally up to you how you want to do your cheese. So Tyler's going to share another option with you. He is cutting out cheese art right now guys okay friends 
We're coming to the end of the lesson. We have 20 of these school cancellation kids cooking lessons available. You can find them on our blog, $5dinners.com slash blog. You can find them on our YouTube channel. Just search $5 dinners. You could find them here on Facebook under the videos tab. There is a school cancellation kids cooking lessons playlist. Is that a smiley face? Aren't you so clever? You guys, give Tyler some love for that fun idea. He's got a smiley face. He cut the cheese smaller. <laughs> Look at how cute you are. Okay, the other day it was we turned a banana into a dolphin and today we're doing smiley face cheese. All right, um, okay, so that would go on there. If you are assembling your sliders right after you take your meatballs out of the oven and the meatballs are still warm, this cheese will melt inside your bun like this. Some other ideas would be to warm your buns. Um, <laughs> this is a lot of funny expressions today, huh? Another idea would be to, you could put these in the microwave for just 10 seconds to melt that cheese um, and then put the top on. But my preferred way is as soon as these guys come out of the oven to have everything ready to go so that you can quickly assemble them and then the cheese will just melt right inside the slider after you assemble them. To get the meatballs out of your baking dish quickly, um, I thought that's probably something I should share. I would recommend using um, some tongs. So let's pretend they're baked right here. I would take, I would grab a meatball, put it on the slider, put the cheese on, let it, let the cheese melt. Um, it'll melt quickly there. So that, are you excited to have these for dinner? Yeah. Oh yeah, me too. So that's how you do barbecue meatball sliders. Tyler, hit me up. High five. Okay. That's how that happens. Uh, if you want one more kids cooking lesson, it's really more of a challenge. It's really more of a family affair. We have the kids prep dinner challenge happening Saturday, May 2nd. That's a week from tomorrow if you're watching this um, on Friday, the last day of our kids cooking lessons. This is like an extension of these cooking lessons. We are going to learn how to prep six meals at one time to put into the freezer. We would love for you to do that. I'm gonna be doing it with my boys. I want you to do it with your people. Um, I want your kids to learn how to work together. This is going to be a good, um, good lessons in working together and teamwork and communication and getting a plan ready and all that stuff. I have the plan for you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to send you email reminders. I want you to be successful with this sort of prepping six meals at a time for the freezer. So type the word prep, P-R-E-P, -E into the comments here below and I'll message you how to RSVP and where, where to get all the information there. If you're watching this video on, let's say, YouTube or our blog, you can come over to Facebook and type the word prep, or you can see on the blog post where to RSVP for the Kids Prep Dinner Challenge. So that's that. I have absolutely, have you had fun doing these? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. They like fight over who gets to do these with me and they fight over who gets to cook when we're not doing these uh, uh, cooking lessons. But I have absolutely adored getting to come into your kitchen in this hard time. This is just, it's brutal. This whole last six weeks has just been a brutal experience and I'm so grateful that you've allowed us into your kitchen in, over the last couple of weeks and allowed me to teach your kids how to do this. I know that it sometimes can be frustrating trying to teach your own children when, you're already, when your emotions are already heightened you know, because of all the other pressures and, and stressors right now. So thank you for allowing us to um, come into your kitchen. Thank you for giving um, me and us the opportunity to show you just how this works. I hope it's been an encouragement and a blessing to you um, as much as it has been to us. So thank you, thank you. So the finale is kind of sad, huh? Of the kids cooking lessons. And we'll hope to see you on Saturday, May 2nd for our kids prep dinner challenge. All right, friends. Have a great rest of your afternoon, and we will see you Saturday, May 2nd, noon Central Time. See you here. Have a good rest of your day, weekend, and next week.